Solutions, what are they, how do I use them, and how do I perform them properly? Well, that's what we're going to discuss in this video. So, there is an equation, the dilution equation, it's V1, C1 uh, equals V2, C2. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take our initial volume and our initial concentration, and we're going to compare it to our new volume and our new concentration. So in this case, our volume one is our unknown. We don't know how much of our concentrated sample we need to do to make a new volume at a smaller concentration. So let's say we want to do super simple math. We want our, we want 100 um, for our concentration two. We want 100 for our volume two, and our concentration one is 1,000. So 100 times 100 is 10,000 divided by 1,000 would be 10. So that's some simple math that you can do. The great thing about this equation is it doesn't matter what the units you're working in as long as the volumes are the same unit and the concentrations are the same unit. So I like to do the math ahead of time. So if I'm working in uh, milliliters, I work in milliliters the whole time. If I'm in microliters, I work in microliters the whole time. And my concentration, if I'm in parts per million, milligrams per milliliter, uh, barrels of monkeys, however you want to do it, that's the concentration that you're going to stay in the entire time. So say we want to make a 20% ethanol solution and we need 50 milliliters of it. So here we go. We're going to call that our stock solution. And so how do we make that out of 100% ethanol or nearly pure ethanol? So here's our pure ethanol. It's 99.99% .99 pure. We're going to round up that 0.01% to 100% just to make our math easier for us. So how do I get from this to this? Well, I'm going to use V1. C1 equals V2, C2. And doing that math, it's going to tell me that I need to take 10 milliliters of my pure ethanol to make 50 milliliters of my stock solution. So I'm going to take 10 milliliters out of this bottle, put it in here. I'm going to dilute until there's a, there's a calibration mark. I'm going to dilute to that mark. That's going to tell me that I've got my 20% solution. Now we're going to move on. And we're going to get rid of the 100%. We don't need that anymore. Now we're working on our stock solution. But we don't want to use our stock solution up because usually you make up quite a bit of that because we want to keep using that instead of dipping into our pure substance. So we're going to make what's called a working solution. So here's our working solution. We're going to make that 10% just to make our dilutions a little bit easier. And so what we're going to do is we're going to calculate, again, V1, C1 equals V2, C2. You're going to see that all day throughout this. And we're going to say, oh, yeah, if I need to make 50 mils of my working solution, I'm going to take 25 milliliters of my stock, and I'll put it in here, and I'm going to dilute to 50 milliliters. That's going to give me a 10% solution. Next, we're going to make up some small standards. So we're going to make up a 5% solution. And to do that, we're going to use the same equation, and it comes out to 5 milliliters of our working solution, goes into there, and we're going to dilute that to 10 milliliters, because we don't need a whole lot of this. We're just making a, a small dilution, so we're going to do this, and we're going to inject it onto our GC. Now, from here, we're not going to take from the 5 and put it into the next one down. That's called a serial dilution, and it is a valid practice, but what happens is if I screwed up and made this incorrect, now if I make my 1%, it's going to carry and propagate that uh, mistake over. So I don't want to propagate that error. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to label my next class 1%. I'm going to use V1, C1 equals V2, C2. And I'm going to calculate out that I need to take one milliliter of my 10%. I'm going to put it in my new volumetric class. I'm going to dilute to 10 milliliters to make my 1% solution. And we're going to repeat that one more time for our half percent solution. So we're going to do the exact same thing. And we're going to calculate out that we need to make a half mil uh, to make a 10 uh, mil solution of half percent. After we're done with this, there is one more step that we would like to do. Uh, I'm not going to do it in here. But normally what we do is we would take something in between the five and the half percent. It could be one percent, it could be three percent, it could be two percent, whatever you want to do. 
and we make what we call either a quality control standard or a bracket standard, something along those lines, and we make it from our working solution. That's going to tell us if we made a mistake along the way making any of these three, because we should get a straight line out of this uh, when we connect to three points, um, area versus concentration. And then we should be able to calculate using the area of our um, QC standard or QC check to make sure that we are, uh, in fact, on that line. It'll tell us if we've made a mistake. So when we're all done with that, the only thing we have to do is write all of this down in our laboratory notebook, make sure that we have all of our calculations uh, done properly, double check them just to be sure, and then we're going to go into the lab and put it into practice. So join me in the lab, and we're going to show you how to do this in real life. Now that we're in the lab, we've collected up all the glass we're going to need. We're going to need some beakers, our 50 mil volumetric flasks, our 10 mil volumetric flask, a graduated cylinder, some water, our ethanol, our laboratory notebook with our calculations laid out, a calculator just in case we need to double check our uh, calculations, and a marker to label everything. First thing we're going to do is label our beaker ethanol. And then we're going to pour some ethanol into this beaker. I've dyed this ethanol blue just so that it shows up a little bit better on camera and you can see the differences in our solutions. Next thing I'm going to do is label a beaker water and pour some water in it for our dilutions. So we're going to pour some water in there. Then we're going to take a look at our calculation. So our calculation tells us that we need of our 100% to make 20% in 50 mils, we need 10 mils of our 100%. So we're going to use our graduated cylinder. We're going to add 10 mils. And so we're going to Add that in slowly, making sure that we don't spill or go over the line. Once we have 10 mils, we're going to take our first volumetric flask and we're going to label it 20%. We're going to use a technique where we pinch the coin top stopper from between our fingers so we don't want to pinch like this because we'll want to put it down we want to do this we take our 10 mils of our ethanol and we're going to pour it directly into our volumetric flask next thing we're going to do is take our squirt bottle of water and we're going to fill this to the line so we're going to get close to the line but not quite over it. Once we get to that point, we can grab a transfer pipette. So we have our transfer pipette here. We can get some extra water and we can top off to the line in our volumetric flask. And then we're just going to invert that a couple of times to make sure that everything is nice and mixed. Now we have our 20%. The next step would be our 10%. So we're going to grab our volumetric flask. We're going to label it 10%. And then we're going to take our 20% and we're going to put it into a beaker. Looking at my calculation, I need 25 milliliters of 20% in 50 milliliters uh, to make 10%. So what we're going to do is we're going to end up filling this a couple of times. So we're going to go ahead and fill it once. We're going to pour into our volumetric. And we're going to do that two and a half more times for a total of 25 milliliters. Now that we've done that two and a half times, we're going to fill, again, close to the line, but not exactly on the line, with water. And we're going to use our transfer pipette 
to add the rest in there. Once we hit the line, we're good to go. And we move on to our next um, standards. The first standard we're gonna make is 10 milliliters of 5%. Looking at my calculations, I need five milliliters of my 10. So I'm going to take my 10, pour it into a clean beaker, and I need five mils of that. We're gonna pour five mils into our rinsed out graduated cylinder. So I am rinsing in between each cut, just so that you know that I'm not contaminating. So we take our five mils, we're going to pour it into our 10 mil volumetric. And same thing, we're going to fill to the line. Get close, top off with our transfer pipette. There's five. So we could continue to use the graduated cylinder, but I have a one milliliter adjustable pipette. So I'm gonna adjust that to one milliliter or a thousand microliters. I'm gonna lock it. I'm gonna get a clean tip. I'm going to put that on the end of my pipette. I'm going to then label as 1%. I'm going to remove my stopper. I'm going to use the technique on my pipette. So I'm going to push to the first stop. I'm going to insert into my liquid. I'm going to slowly pull up. I'm going to then touch the side and push down to the first stop, all the way down to the second stop, release up, and then push down again to make sure I expel everything. That's one mil in there. Now I'm going to fill this close to the line again, top off with water, and stopper. That's my 1%. Last is my half percent, so I'm going to label 0.5%. I'm going to use the same adjustable pipette. I can adjust it down to 500 microliters. Lock it. Use the same technique. I'm going to push down to the first stop. I'm going to pull up. And I am going to raise up, I'm going to put that in there, push down to the second stop, up, down to the second stop. Half a mil is in here. I am then going to use the water to top off close to the line, but not quite, and then use my transfer pipette to do the rest of the work. From here, I would get some GC vials. I would use a transfer pipette to get each of those into a GC vial, and then I would inject. Please like and subscribe. Make sure to click the bell icon to receive more content from Lucidity.